was totally convinced I was dying. I was totally convinced that I'd be gone in probably a month or so. But doctors <laughs> saved him and may be able to save hundreds of thousands of others who think they have Alzheimer's or Parkinson's. You don't have to go gently into that good night. You need to fight, and we need to give you the tools to fight. For many people, it's the worst possible news. They're diagnosed with Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, dementia, or another debilitating disease, told to put their affairs in order and prepare for years of suffering and eventually death. Millions of Americans have to live with that kind of diagnosis and all the heartache that goes with it. But what if the diagnosis is wrong? What if they're really suffering from something that's treatable? That could be the case for tens of thousands of people, including those you're about to meet, Americans who believe a simple surgery helps save them from senility. I was totally convinced I was dying. I was totally convinced that I'd be gone in probably a month or so. Bob Fowler was so sure he was dying that five years ago, at the age of 69, he wrote his own obituary. So, Bob, also known as husband, brother, brother-in-law, dad, Uncle Bob, and the most exalted title of all, Papa, has left us. Hard to write that. It was hard to write it. You thought this was, this was the end and there was nothing that could be I done. I was totally convinced. I was totally convinced because I had been to doctor after doctor after doctor and with absolutely no positive results. For nearly a decade, Fowler had struggled with debilitating symptoms, trouble with balance, memory, and incontinence. Doctors suspected Parkinson's or Alzheimer's, but weren't sure. His condition worsened so terribly that he ended up in a wheelchair and had to stop working. Eventually, his wife, Benita, began making plans to put him in a nursing home. I had to sleep in a chair in the den for the last three years of the 90s because I couldn't put my head on a pillow. I felt as if I were suffocating or drowning. He'd also developed a severe case of dementia. How many doctors do you think he went to? Probably 15 in the nine years. In all those years, none of his doctors suggested he have an MRI or a CAT scan, so he never got a definitive diagnosis of what was wrong with him. In Phoenix, retired dentist Milt Newman suffered for 15 years from the same symptoms as Bob Fowler. In Milt Newman's case, a CAT scan was performed, yet none of his doctors could pinpoint what was causing his decline. My concentration was nil. There wasn't any. Uh, reading a book was difficult because I couldn't remember what happened 10 pages back. And later on, conversation was difficult because I'd forget what people would say. How old were you when this all started? Maybe 55. Which is not old. Oh, no. Milt's wife, Phyllis, says she remembers watching her once vibrant husband simply slip away. It was like his, his, his brain was sinking into his body. That's the only way I could, I could say, you know. Eventually, you got a diagnosis of Alzheimer's. That's true, and I was floored by that. Because to that, that was a death sentence. Uh, and I said to myself, well, let me get prepared. But what Milt Newman wasn't prepared for was the news that it was all a mistake and that there was hope. Have a seat up here. Last year, after 15 years of suffering, Milt Newman met Dr. Harold Recate, a neurosurgeon at the Barrow Neurological Institute in Phoenix. He realized that what Newman had wasn't Alzheimer's, but a condition called normal pressure hydrocephalus, or NPH. NPH is caused by excess fluid putting pressure on the brain. We should have an ounce of water inside our head. This is probably 10 ounces. So there's 10 times too much fluid in here than there is in a normal person. What is that water on the brain actually doing? It's pushing the brain outward and stretching the nerve fibers so that they can't function properly. The result can be the very symptoms that plagued both Milt Newman and Bob Fowler. Problems with gait or walking, with thinking, and with bladder control. To Dr. Recate, those symptoms, especially the shuffling walk seen here in this patient, are a dead giveaway. But doctors rarely realize that the cause might be in pH, and a surprising number of cases go undiagnosed and untreated. So is it almost that Alzheimer's is just sort of the default position? You At, come in, you're, you're having you're memory old, trouble. You're, you're old, old. You're, you have Alzheimer's. And most of the time, that diagnosis is correct. 
Alzheimer's and other forms of dementia afflict more than 7 million people in the United States, but medical professionals estimate that between 5 and 10 percent of them, at least 375,000 people, might actually have NPH, and most physicians are missing it. Milt was going to doctors, mm -hmm. and the doctors were misdiagnosing him. Why do doctors tend to, to miss the symptoms? It's hard. It's hard to, to make the diagnosis. You have to sit down, and you have to listen, and you have to examine the patient, and you have to do it in a thorough way, and then you have to order an expensive test. An MRI scan will cost somewhere around two to $3,000. To think that there are that many people out there misdiagnosed who are just missing out on so much life. You don't have to go gently into that good night. You, can, you, sh you need to fight, and we need to give you the tools to fight. The first tool is knowledge, because once the condition is discovered, the treatment is a 45-minute procedure in which neurosurgeons insert a tube called a shunt into the brain. That tube drains the excess fluid from the brain and moves it to the belly where it can be absorbed. Do you feel the shunt? Are you aware Not of it at all? all? The shunt may need to be adjusted because removing too much or too little fluid can be dangerous. That adjustment used to require further surgery. Now it's done painlessly with a magnet in the doctor's office. After the surgery, how did you feel? I came out of it fantastic. I felt like the old Milton. How, how soon after? Right away. Bob Fowler had a similar transformation in 1999 when finally, after 10 years, he was told he really had NPH. Did you feel like you had gotten your oh, life back? I never anticipated feeling that good again in my life. And all of a sudden, I felt fantastic. I'm 74 years old now, and I'm doing things that, that I wouldn't have dreamed of doing any time during my 60s. Has this well started production yet? Yes. Today, five years after his surgery, Bob Fowler is back at work. Oh, good shot. <laughs> and back at play. But he's also a man with a mission to spread the word about NPH. I'm Bob Fowler, but this was me a couple of years ago. Here he is in a commercial reenacting what his symptoms were like then and showing how he is now. The ad was produced by one of the shunt manufacturers. There was talk of Alzheimer's or Parkinson's, but what I really had was a neurological condition known as NPH normal pressure hydrocephalus. Then I found out that NPH can be treated. We've had hundreds and hundreds of calls from patients who saw those commercials and said, that sounds like me. It sounds like my mother, my father, someone that I know. Neurosurgeon Gail Russo is a leader in the field of NPH research. She's working to raise awareness in both doctors and patients about the three classic signs of the condition. Patients and their families should know that if someone is aging and their gait is worsening, their mental thought processes are becoming less clear and or they have urinary incontinence, they need a scan. They need to insist on a scan. And they need to see a specialist who knows about normal pressure hydrocephalus. But even that, she says, might not lead to a dramatic recovery. We can improve the symptoms of normal pressure hydrocephalus, but we can't make you look younger. Uh, we can't slow down the other things that make you feel old that have happened during that same period, arthritis, perhaps heart disease, the other medical problems that we all seem to accumulate as we get older. This only helps one of them, but when we're right about it, it can help a lot. No one understands that more than Bob Fowler, who says he feels like he's been given a second chance and he wants to share it with others. Do you think you see people on the street now, in the mall, at a restaurant? I can spot them quickly. I've even walked up to people. I have walked up to people and had the audacity to walk up to a person and say, have you had an MRI or a CAT scan in the last few years? And they said, no, why? What business is it of yours? And I'd say, because I know your gait, I know your walk, I want you to go from here and have a CAT scan or a MRI. Do yourself a favor.